back to my little mini guide for the starting classes of Dark Souls, specifically Dark Souls Remastered. Not that it makes a difference, but that is the version I'm playing. My name is Rob, and today we're going to be discussing The Thief, which if you go on any online uh, boards and look up like what is the best starting class or what's the best starting class for a beginner, <clears throat> it may come up the, that The Thief is the one you definitely shouldn't pick if you're a beginner. And I'll get into why that is the case, but a couple of things to note. The description here is guilt-ridden thief, high critical hits, which is true. Only problem is the game doesn't tell you how to really go about getting those critical hits or what to do with the thief starting equipment, but I'm going to show you. <clears throat> and another thing that's definitely worth paying attention to here is it says has master key. So... Whatever you do for your gift, don't choose the master key because you already have one. Instead, get something different like the black fire bombs or twin humanities. Uh, anything, basically. I'm going to go with black fire bombs though because those can be really useful. I think you get like, I don't know, like maybe 10 of them or so. I can't remember. Another thing, I apologize, in the last couple of videos, I forgot to show the descriptions of the knight and the wanderer, but. Yeah, basically self-explanatory stuff. Things that I went over, pros that I went over with these two starting classes. But let's uh, let's go ahead and go over the thief's starting stats. Starts out at level five with a vitality of nine, the lowest of any of these starting classes so far. <clears throat> so the thief is going to be a bit squishier than the other starting classes we've chosen. Uh, Eleven attunement, so. One whole attunement slot for you to use, and one more point into attunement, and you can equip two spells. Nine endurance, not a lot, so you can't equip very heavy stuff and expect to be move quickly. Ex expect to be able to move quickly as the thief early on. Nine strength, lowest thus far. The thief cannot even one hand a long sword, so maybe something you should do with some early levels with the thief is put a few points into strength, maybe up to like ten to twelve. <clears throat> so that you can use things like the long sword or broadsword if you find it, or uh, the battle axe if you happen to get lucky and an enemy drops one of those. Um, <clears throat> 15 decks. Uh, you can put a few points into strength and then be able to one-hand the wing spear from the get-go. So that's a good thing with the thief. 10 resistance, 12 intelligence, and 11 faith. So. The thief almost has the stats of like a spell casting hybrid. Like, with one more point into faith, you can cast the heal miracle early on that I showed y'all how to get in the video covering the knight. And with 12 intelligence, that's more than enough to cast soul arrow early on in the game. So, I'm not going to go over all that stuff that I've shown in the previous three videos. Instead, I'm going to kind of show you how to utilize the thief's strengths, what his starting um, weapon can do and things like that. Uh, another thing I want to add that's a pro with choosing the thief as your starting class. Is he not cool looking? Even the female version of the thief is really cool looking. Yep. Hang on. Back before things were body type A and body type B. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's give her... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, she doesn't have her head covered. She just has a little ninja mask thing on, so... Yeah. Anyway. I'll just stick with female since I've got that selected. I'm just gonna speed through this opening part. You've seen it a million times. Uh, let's see here. Go ahead and drop that. Let's rush to grab the equipment of the thief. Something you can do if you pick the black fire bombs as your starting gift, you start with 10 of them. That is enough to kill the asylum demon without ever, you know, getting your equipment or whatever. And if you kill him on the first encounter, you get his weapon, the demon's great hammer. But you won't be able to use it for a while, so I'm not really going to I'm not going to bother demonstrating that with the um, not with the thief. It would take the thief forever to get enough strength to use that uh, particular weapon. So 
So we got the target shield, and we're going to get the bandit's knife. So the bandit's knife, not a lot of damage. Target shield. Uh, the target shield's a special shield. Uh, on weapon type, you see that it says small shield. And if you read the description, it says that small shields are always less stable, but landing critical hits after parry is easier. This shield is specialized for parrying. Uh, that's a little misleading. I wouldn't say that landing hits after a parry are easier, but if you press L2, you'll notice that the parry animation is a little different. <clears throat> and that is because the parry uh, for target shield and I think the buckler. Oh, look at there. I didn't know he could. I never. Well, yeah, I guess I knew he could drop a short bow. But, you know, what are the chances? So, yeah, the thief doesn't start with a short bow. But there you go. If you get lucky, you have the stats to use one. You only need seven strength. So, that's pretty neat. Who, who, who would, have, would have expected that to happen? But anyway. <clears throat> so, basically, you have more iframes on your parry. Not iframe. You have more parry frames when the... Um, when the animation will actually perform a parry. Which is a little deceptive on the parrying shields because it looks like when you press the button it takes... You would think that it takes a second for the actual parry frames to get started, but they're actually right there at the very beginning of the animation. I'll demonstrate. So he's probably gonna do that. See, right there. If you press L1 just before the attack connects, and then as you can see, I dealt over 200 damage with that repost. Which, you know, repost damage is always relatively high, but it's a little bit higher with daggers and rapiers and weapons like that. So let's look at the bandit's knife. <clears throat> a couple of things to point out. On other weapons, you'll notice that most of the time critical is just 100. You get a much bigger critical modifier with the bandit's knife is at 147, so you do much more damage with a successful riposte or a backstab. So that's kind of what you, the way you want to play with the thief starting out is you want to go for critical attacks. Backstabs are probably going to be the easiest to get because all you have to do is circle around an enemy and press the attack button when his back is facing you, which is pretty easy to do in Dark Souls 1 because enemies are pretty stupid in this game. Uh, on aux auxiliary effects, <clears throat> determine strength of bleeding and poison effects. And if you look down at the bottom there, you see a 300 next to that icon. That's the bleed buildup for this weapon. So when you actually hit an enemy with these attacks, the bleed meter will build up. And I'll demonstrate that here in a bit. Yes. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I know, I'm terrible. Anyway, as you strike an enemy, the bleed meter will build up, and that's basically like a uh, status ailment meter. And once you fill up that meter for bleed, you'll get a critical attack, which is like, I want to say it's... If your bleed uh, damage thing for your weapon is 300, I want to say that's like 30% of the enemy's health. And that's 30% of their, like, total health, not, like, um, current health or anything like that. Oh, Asylum Demon's getting antsy. So you just run around, backstab, do good damage. If you attack enemies head-on with this bandit's knife, it's not going to do a ton of damage unless you're able to proc bleed. As you can see, you saw that burst of blood just there, and I did a little bit more damage than I had done before. So, bleed can be a little useful for stuff like that, but for the most part, you're going to want to do backstabs. It's fine to, I mean, you, you should practice your parrying and riposte, but <clears throat> it might be a little awkward getting that to work with the parrying shield because the animation's a little strange. But, you know, you can play around with it. <clears throat> to me, it's easier to get the parry timing down on uh, regular shields they don't have that wonky animation. So basically, 
on enemies like the Asylum Demon, where you're just striking at their flesh, it's very easy to get bleed damage. One, two, three. You get a critical hit on an enemy like the Asylum Demon. So there are certain situations where a weapon like the Bandit Knife can work really, really well. The Thief isn't a bad starting class per se. It's just harder for a beginner maybe to get the feel for. And it really helps to know what you're doing with the thief. And once again, <clears throat> that's um with the thief, you know, you just basically, you know, if it's, it's kind of a wild card type of character. If you want to have a the thief's, I mean the uh, master key, but also have some other starting weapon, you can not starting weapon. Some other uh, little special item, the uh, gift. Uh, the thief is good for that. It looks cool. Has no poise. Just keep that in mind. The thief is a squishy character, but of course mobile from the get-go. Not a bad starting character, but you probably want to get a better shield ASAP. So I'm actually going to demonstrate that. <clears throat> I was about. I was thinking of ending the video on that note, but. You want to get a better weapon and then maybe use the, maybe just use the uh, bandit's knife as like a secondary. But the main thing is you probably want a better shield because again, 78 physical damage reduction, that's not great. And 45 stability. Yeah. This shield is not for blocking at all. I know I made that look really easy just now. It takes some practice to get good at the parry timing in this game. That parry actually came out a little earlier than I wanted it to. But because of the thieves or the target shields rather um, increased amount of parry frames, it was a bit more forgiving. <clears throat> and I still got the parry even though I parried a little early. Just kick that guy off here. Of course, like I said, just circle around behind him, backstab. You'll notice I have not spent any of my souls yet. You can definitely level up whatever you want to. As far as your stats, like I said, you can put a few points into strength. Uh, honestly, uh, you can either do that or put a few into vitality and endurance. But honestly, strength would probably be the most helpful for the thief because they're even just leveling up your strength to like 10 or 12 can greatly increase uh, the amount of equipment you can use. <clears throat> Even simple weapons that you can buy from a merchant early on, like the reinforced club or the hand axe, weapons like that, they don't seem like they would be that great, but they're honestly not bad at all. Another thing to keep in mind when you are getting a critical attack like that, whether it's a backstab or a repost, during that animation, it's nothing but iframes. You are invulnerable for the duration of that animation. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> if you're being ganged up on, like just then, I was able to totally negate his damage. There we go. Bleed will also proc through an enemy's shield. So even if they're blocking attacks like he was just now, I was steadily building up his bleed meter, and then that final attack dealt a little bit more damage than the other ones did. Uh, 75 damage, uh, if I was seeing that correctly, which was enough to finish him off. <clears throat> so I'm going to show a little bit of this opening area, the Undead Bird. Uh, this is the first area you're supposed to go to. Say hi to the dragon been making entries like that ever since Demon Souls. Again, 
if you're not confident in your parry timing or if you just simply can't get it down just hold your shield up circle around behind them press r1 if you did it correctly you'll get that animation and it's more than enough damage to kill any of these enemies right here in the beginning so you get rid of those first few dudes be careful there is an archer right there at the top take out this guy again i invincibility frames and we're just gonna r1 this guy until he bleeds out after a few hits with the bandit's knife i did get a critical hit on him so right through here if you want a better shield than what you've got for free get the wooden shield which isn't half bad it weighs 1.5 units it's actually lighter than the target shield has much better stability at 52 93 percent physical damage reduction 65 lightning but only 30 fire which makes sense because i mean it's a wooden shield but if you want one of the best shields in the game that you can get early on uh, these spear guys just want to do a kick and go to town on them there we go whoop but be careful and these guys are going to be really difficult to circle around and backstab because they track you really easily, really well. So, press forward in R1, and if you do it right, unfortunately, unlike future Souls games, you don't get a critical hit by breaking an enemy's guard, but you do get to kind of wail on them there for a bit. So anyway, you come down here. <clears throat> Careful, there's a guy hiding behind a shelf. It's a very neat, neatly put together shelf. So whoever put that in front of him, like they took the time to array everything very nicely. <coughs> Again, when you parry with a regular shield, you notice the difference here. But keep in mind that the parry frames are at the very start of the animation, right there. As soon as you, almost as soon as you press the button. But anyway, you come over to this guy who's Definitely hollow, but he's not hostile. Well, now he's first merchant in the game. So, what would you buy from the first merchant? A couple of things you eventually want to get that are extremely helpful is the residence key and the bottomless box. Extremely helpful. But the first thing I'm going to buy, you can get better weapons from him, like the hand axe or the reinforced club. Those are both really good. Uh, short sword and scimitar are both fine if you want to just use the bandit's knife as a secondary but the main thing you want to be looking for here is the heater shield because it's only two units of weight which is the same weight as the target shield and it's got 55 stability that beautiful 100 percent damage reduction as well as the 70 percent fire damage reduction thank you kai <laughs> and it didn't even cost that much a thousand souls so you can buy plenty of other things. And it looks pretty good with the thief as well, I think. So there you go. Uh, from here, like I said, level up your strength a little bit to 10 or 12. Get you um, some other weapon besides the bandit's knife. The bandit's knife isn't bad, obviously. I'm running through here laying a beat down on these early hollows. But it doesn't deal a ton of damage on its own, and you kind of have to know what you're doing when you pick the thief. So, like I said, if you want a wild card? Thief is your boy. And just look at that sexy armor. That female thief, she kind of got a sway there, don't she? Yeah. She, she, she knows she's hot stuff. <laughs> Ain't she beautiful? <laughs> Alright guys, that's my little mini guide on the thief and some of the things you can do with her when you start out. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hope it's been insightful. I'll see you soon with the next starting class on the list. Until then, y'all take care.